Hi, I want to try something a little different in this video. I want to take you through the drawing process as I did this pencil drawing honey and share some of the tools and tips along the way and also my thinking process behind tackling some of the harder textures that I wasn't really sure how to do at the time. Also, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I'm starting with getting my outline of the drawing here. I've already planned the image and my composition out in Photoshop, so I have a pretty good idea of how I want it to sit on the page. What I wanted to do with this piece was to have it look almost like the honey was actually dripping off the piece of paper to create almost like a trompe l'oeil or trick of the eye effect. Um, with these kind of effects, it's really important to pay attention to your shadows and try and get the lighting right. So I'm just trying to give the honey some substance here, so I'm just establishing a mid-tone and then I'm going to work in my highlights, try and keep them bright and crisp and also work in my shadows and get a nice contrast going. I, I had no real idea how to draw honey, I've never drawn it before but I noticed that there were lots of little drops or air bubbles inside the honey, so I needed to figure out how to add those in. Usually I could color around them, each individual one, leaving the white from the paper, um, and often that's the best way to do some textures, but in this case it would be so time consuming to do that, and I figured I might be able to just use my mechanical eraser to, to bring back the, the white from the paper um, through the tone. Usually I don't like to use mechanical erasers, they're a bit messy and um, clumsy, but in this case it worked really well. I mostly draw with mechanical pencils, they're a lot easier for me than traditional ones. Um, I don't have to interrupt my work to keep sharpening them, so that's, that's quite a big time saver. And then for different kind of textures I'll use different uh, grades of lead and different size leads as well in mechanical pencils. They can go as small as 0.03 mils, I think, which is really, really small, and I use those for very fine details. Those leads will usually be a lot harder, um, and then as they get larger, I'll soften them up and usually just try and work with the, the darkest possible lead that I can for whatever size um, mechanical pencil I'm using. I often smooth out or push around the graphite that I've already applied using cotton wool, as I'm doing here. Um, I'll often go over it a bunch of times to try and find the tone and texture that I'm looking for. Also, I'll use blending stumps to do the same thing, just maybe if I need a little bit more texture um, than the cotton wool is giving, then yeah, blending stumps work great. Here I'm just busy using my stencil that I've cut out and used for years to, to try and get a nice sharp line. Um, some people have been asking what the stencil is made out of, it's just acetate that I cut a, a random shape that I thought would be useful and turns out it has been. Okay cool, so now I'm working on the top of the eyelid. Uh, this was pretty dark and shadowed so I needed to apply a lot of graphite here. I'm using a 9B pencil and smoothing it out with a piece of cotton wool. I then used my mechanical eraser to pull out the highlights. I'll try to slow this down and show you from another angle so you can see this in real time. The eyelid was really textured and actually quite a challenge for me. I've drawn loads of eyelids before, but only very slowly and carefully, observing every detail. And for this one, I kind of wanted to do it more intuitively or draw it out of my head a bit, so I just kind of mapped out areas that I knew were high in detail and then went back into them with an idea of, of how I wanted to try and capture it. So I wanted to try and get that like meaty fleshiness of the of the eyelid using the highlights and thankfully this time it actually worked out and I was quite happy with the way that it came out. So I'm kind of working randomly here just filling in little like textures and shadows trying to maintain the overall shape of the eyelid as well. This kind of stuff is a bit hit or miss and it's important to just experiment when doing this kind of thing. Um, be okay with making mistakes even if you don't know what you're doing at the time, just try and jump in. Here I'm using a mechanical pencil again for the eyelashes. Something to keep in mind with drawings like this that are so like close up to the subject, you want to try and create a good like depth of field effect and eyelashes often really need that. So using a blending stump to try and soften an eyelash as it's moving closer to you or further away from you is a really nice way to, to get that feel or that soft out of focus. Feel. Here I'm working on a big drop of honey that I wanted to have falling off the top eyelashes. It's going to distort the light quite a bit so it's important to try and pay attention to how it affects the highlights and also everything behind it. For this drop I added the reflection of eyelashes paying close attention to try and have them distorted in the same shape of the drop. Now I'm just applying the background above the eye. This is mostly done with cotton wool because I want it to be quite soft. I'm using my mechanical pencil to kind of identify areas that'll be a bit darker and give a bit of texture to the skin. Um, and then working back into them with cotton wool to, to get them out of focus. Um, I go over this a bunch of times to really get a soft look. Then as it moves closer into focus, I start darkening the tone and using harsher lines. 
I embossed the paper here a little to suggest fine hairs and then emphasize them using a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. This is a great eraser for really fine lines, but they can also smudge your paper a little bit, so just practice with using it and, and use them carefully. Eyebrows can be so difficult, and I kind of avoided drawing them in this piece. Compositionally, the image didn't really need them, and I was quite grateful for that. They can be a nightmare to draw, and here I just needed to kind of suggest them with a few soft dark lines. And now onto my favorite part, the iris. I really love drawing irises. They're so beautifully complex and weird and random, almost like a complex landscape that you can invent as you go along. I've drawn many irises over the years, and with practice now, I can draw a lot of the details just out of my head. I'm mostly using an IMB pencil here to apply the graphite and then smoothing it out with the blending stump. Then with any of the finer details, I'll use my mechanical eraser again or my Tombow Mono Zero eraser to kind of get those little fibers that flow through the, the layers of the iris. Be careful not to get too repetitive with your patterns, so remind yourself to try and keep the fibers as random as possible as you draw. I'm now working on the whites of the eye. I really enjoy trying to capture all the capillaries and details here. And an idea I had while I was working on this piece was to try and make the capillaries follow a honeycomb shape. It was an interesting challenge because I didn't really want the honeycomb to appear flat. I wanted it to follow the shape of the eye to be round. There's a lot of blending that happens here. The capillaries aren't as sharp as you might think, so the lines need to be softened. And when I work over them again in cotton wool, it kind of blends them into the white of the eye and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Oh, so quick tip, a mistake I often see in drawings of eyes is at the edge of the iris people draw them as a harsh, like sharp line that's contrasted against the white of the eye. But if you look closely, you'll see that these edges are always quite blurry. People's irises tend to kind of blur slightly into the white of the eyes. Okay, so a quick shout out to this video sponsor Squarespace. It goes a long way to help sustain this channel and keep making these videos, but more importantly, they're a company I'm really happy to promote because I feel they can really help other artists and creatives looking to pursue a career in their field. It's so important to create an online portfolio to help clients find you and to create a platform to make it easy for them to get in touch with you. And for me, I just felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store and most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love it, use this offer code and get 10% of your first purchase. Okay, so now I'm onto the detail of the skin under the eye. This part was very intense to draw. There's a lot of detail here and I actually had no clue how to go about drawing it. I was pretty much making it up and hoping that it worked out as I went along. I made a couple of mistakes and had to rework it a few times before I was satisfied. I guess that's the only way to go about doing this kind of thing. You have to just jump into it, especially with textures that you aren't familiar with. There's no guideline or guidebook on how to draw them, so it's just problem solving as you go along. Um, the important thing is to just jump into it and see how it goes. Even if you have no clue what you're doing, just experiment. And yeah, I mean, there's a risk that you might ruin your drawing a little bit. But that, I mean, that's the incentive to, you know, try and get it right. But yeah, sorry, I know this is a ramble, but just I really encourage people to rather try something than get paralyzed by self-doubt. Um, I suppose we, we all do, but trying something and experimenting is how we learn. I really love doing the bottom lid of the eye. They just catch light really nicely and there's an interesting play of light in the eyelashes. For the eyelashes, I'll draw them in with my mechanical pencil again and I'll take a dirty blending stump and do a soft shadow below them. This kind of stuff gets pretty difficult. I'll be working on an area and if I feel it's not going well, I'll try and fix it. But sometimes I just feel defeated and then I'll jump to another area of the drawing and try and do something I feel more confident with. Um, just to kind of give myself a break and give myself a sense of progress and achievement. And then when I'm feeling fresh again, I'll return to the challenging part with fresh eyes. And often things will open up a bit and see something I missed before or I don't know, get maybe an idea of how to achieve a texture that I was struggling with before. Um, it's nice to try and add all the little hairs under the eyes. The details are really rewarding to do, but again, try to not get caught up in the small stuff. It's easy to get carried away with the details and ruin your drawing. So here I'm just kind of filling out some area with my pencil to, to get the shape of my shadows underneath the eyelid. 
and then I'm going to just smooth it out with some cotton wool and my blending stumps to get closer to the skin texture that I'm looking for. Here I'm just using the mechanical eraser and my Tombow Monazir eraser to highlight the eyelashes on the bottom of the eyelid. Also over here I'm using my mechanical eraser again to highlight some of the texture of the skin on the lower eyelid. Um, usually I would kind of draw around these little patches. It's similar to the top eyelid but, but I think in this case it was actually quite easy for me to just kind of do a couple dots and, and suggest some texture rather than try and really go into it and, and create this um, like fleshy look. Okay and now we're moving to the last part of the eye which is the lower left part of the eyelid. Um, everything here is pretty soft so I'm using very light mechanical pencils and working everything over with blending stumps and cotton wool. There's some nice highlights here but even these highlights are already soft so basically just kind of drawing around them with my mechanical pencil and then shading them in with a blending stump as to not get any dark marks. And I'll be working back into the skin uh, below the eyelashes here just with cotton wool to try and get it as soft and out of focus as possible. And yeah, it's quite nice to have the contrast between eyelashes that are slightly more in focus and the soft skin in the background. It really kind of makes the eyelashes pop out of it. Okay, I'm working with a wrist brace here because I injured my wrist climbing. A lot of people thought I was using a, some kind of drawing assist when they first saw it in a previous video, which it isn't. I'm just trying to make sure the injury doesn't get worse while I'm working. And another thing I learned over time is to remember to go back over your highlights with an eraser to try and bring the whites out again. A lot of dust can land on the paper without you really noticing and it just makes the drawing look a little bit dull. And the same goes for your darker areas. Sometimes that graphite can kind of get picked up a little bit with uh, your hand or the paper that you're resting on. So remember to go back into that with a 9B pencil if it's very dark or just kind of make those lines sharp again. And yeah, there you go. That's the finished drawing. So yeah, that's how I drew Honey. I, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope there might have been some tools or tips that could help you with your work. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. And also a huge thank you to everyone who's hit like and shared my work and just helped grow this community. It's been incredible. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.